10 random magic cards rated day number 98 happy tuesday everyone i said i'd be here with you bright and early but it's like 11 a.m for me that is bright and early let's look at the first card of the day while ziggy scratches at me and meows the entire video that'll be fun first card of the day is hecatomb oh, i love hecatomb dude this is originally printed in ice age and for some unknown reason it is only $1 to purchase this card. This is three mana, one and two black for an enchantment. When it comes into play, sack four guys. You can pay zero. Let's let's actually read the Oracle text. Tap an untapped swamp you control to have Hecatomb deal one damage to any target. Tap a swamp, deal a damage to any target. Let me say that one more time just in case it hasn't quite sunk in. Tap a swamp. Tap a swamp. It deals a damage to any target. Now, yeah, you have to sack four guys. Or you have to sacrifice Hecatomb. It doesn't say that on the Ice Age, you know, printing. But nowadays the Oracle text says you must sack Hecatomb unless you sack four creatures. Um, <clears throat> back in the day we used to play this as just like, oh, I've only got two guys to sack. I guess I got to sack them. Oh, I built my whole deck with no creatures. I guess I get to just Hecatomb. You know what I mean? So there is that. But <laughs> but even even with the, the Oracle text on it as printed now, this card is still great. You know, you do have to sack guys. I mean, I'm going to keep saying that. You have to sack some guys. <laughs> but um, this ability just sitting on the table, especially when you get to untap the next turn, this ability just sitting on the table is completely busted. <laughs> it really is, dude. I don't know why this card isn't more popular in Commander. Um, I think you can find multiple situations you can engineer where, like, sacking four dudes is not that big of a deal, you know? And um, you have, like, Urborg out, so, like, all your lands are swamps, you know what I mean? And now you can just go to town, you know? Like, kill that guy, kill that guy, kill that guy. Eventually start going dome with them, so... You can tap these... You can use this ability at the end of an opponent's turn or something, right? So just, like, tap down your remaining lands, deal damage. So this this is... I just... I love Hecatomb. This is, like really maybe on my top 100 list of like sort of favorite not best but like favorite cards of all time i'm gonna give hecatomb a uh 6.7 mostly because i'm in the safety and comfort of my office and you can't stop me from doing that um, but i do think the card deserves it i think this card deserves a little bit more analysis and for people to look at it more often and realize like how incredible it can be so play hecatomb i guess is the uh the point of my TED Talk here. Moving on to Forest. Basic lands get a five. This one looks okay. Kataki Wars Wage is actually up next. This is two mana, one and a white for a 2-1 legendary spirit. All artifacts have. At the beginning of your upkeep, sack this artifact. Unless you pay one, kid. So this is originally printed in Saviors of Kamigawa. Has been printed a couple of times since then. Uh, and the most recent is actually a future site border in mystery booster 2 that's really really neat this um card is over a dollar all iterations of it are over a dollar and working their way into two dollar territory i want this mystery booster 2 one it's the cheapest one at a dollar 38 and it looks really cool i've always liked the future site frame um but either way yeah that's fine i don't remember this card at all from saviors <laughs> played during saviors and this card Probably has crossed my eyeballs, but I, I just, again, didn't internalize it because it wasn't that important in standard. But, you know, it seems like it'd be really good against, like, Affinity. <laughs> you know what I mean? It doesn't, doesn't it, uh, Ziggy? I think maybe. But still, yeah. This is kind of really neat because people play a lot of Mana Rocks and, like, other artifacts. People have treasures, this kind of, like, hard counters treasure, soft counters treasure. It's hard. It's a hard counter of a treasure. Um that's kind of neat, right? Like clue tokens and other little artifacts people have. Because like everyone plays like 20 artifacts in their commander deck. Like 10 artifacts, a few rocks. Everyone plays soul ring. So I don't know. This kind of tax is actually really, really sick. I like it. Um, Six. It's a pretty good hate bear. You know what I mean? This hard counter is moxes. <laughs> hard, counting, hard countering moxen is kind of neat. Fungal Reaches is up next. This is a land that taps for a single mana. Or you can pay one, tap it, put a storage counter on it. Or you can pay one, remove X storage counters from it to add X mana in any combination of red and or green to your mana pool. So I have to pay mana to put a storage counter on it? Get out of here. Actually, these are good, though. People, these were originally printed in Time Spiral. Uh, it's been a Time Spiral kind of week already. But these actually saw some amount of play in a deck or two here and there i think they were in the Safi eric's daughter deck with like gaddick teague the combo deck um so yeah you would see these from time to time but they were never like super popular this is another thing though that i think we should like reevaluate for commander um 
A little bit. I think that storage counter lands are actually really, really cool. And not enough people play them. But I'm just going to give this a 5.5. Uh, I think that's probably what it deserves. You know, I tend to overvalue lands a good bit. And, you know, basics get five. Some of the time, this is not going to be better than a basic. A lot of the time, it won't be better than a basic. I'll say that much. But, you know, this one has use cases beyond just a basic land. Um, and beyond a lot of other lands, too. Storage is... It's a really interesting ability, and even though I have to pay one in this case, rather than just tap it, I have to pay one. But I guess you do tap it. You just tap it and pay the one, right, and remove the X counters. But it still feels like you need more storage counters on it than other storage counters land to actually, like, pay off, which kind of sucks. But storage counter lands are always going to interest me. But we'll look at Marauding Bone Slasher up next. This is three mana, uh, two and a black for a 3-3 three, three zombie minotaur that can't block unless you control another zombie. Uh, pretty bad. Pretty terrible, actually. This is printed in Hour of Dev down here. Uh, it's not good. <laughs> three mana three threes need to have some sort of upside in this day and age. So we'll give it a two and leave it at that. Hey, Ziggy. Next is Whirlwind Denial, printed in Theros Beyond Death. <laughs> this is three mana. Two and a blue for an instant. For each spell and ability your opponents control, counter it unless its controller pays four. So pretty neat if they have multiple things on the stack, they have to pay four for all of them. Also, again, works on abilities, which is really like the sickest part of this card, you know? Like, oh, you're trying to pop that fetch land, whirlwind denial, you know? It's pretty good. <laughs> so this has always been pretty cool. I'm not sure how much play it actually sees. Um to be honest, but it is, it is pretty sick and people have played it. <laughs> people have played this card. Ooh, that's a good looking mystical archive print right there. Look at that. Look at that bad boy. I want that 35 cents. That's worth it. Um, I'm going to give denial. What do you give a card like this? Hmm. I think it looks worse than cancel to a lot of people, but trust me, this is the ability to hit abilities and multiple of them too is just crazy. So I'm going to give Denial a 5.1, I think. Yeah, it seems high, but I think it's right. Next is Bog Raiders from Portal, but also Urza's Saga. Oh, I never really connected that these two are the same card. I've seen this art right here. It's Steve Luke art right here. But I've also seen this Carl Critchlow art. But I've never really connected that these two are the same card for some reason. This is three mana, two, and a black for a 2-2 two, two creature. <laughs> it's a zombie with Swamp Walk. Um... So it's bad. This is not very good. Um, scathed zombies that we slapped an actual ability on. This is like a 1.6. It's not even that. It's like a 1.3. Somewhere in that neighborhood. That's not good. Remote Isle is up next. So this is another cycling land. Um, this one in ETB's tap. Taps for blue or you can cycle it for two mana. Originally printed in Urza Saga along with the other ones that cycle for two mana. This is beautiful art, by the way. Um, Cerulo, Cerulo, I guess, Cerulo did this art and it's gorgeous. It's just, it just is. It's a good landscape. These though, I have to give like a, um, I think we gave sevens to the ones that, um, that cycle for a single mana. Uh, I think I'll give six and a halves to the ones that just cycle for two mana. These are still very good though. And God, can we bring back the Urza Saga, like land border, you know, it's like gray border with the yellow, um, like outline, I love it. It looks so good. But yeah, let's let's give it a six and a half. We move on to Chaotic Strike, only ever printed in Invasion. Two mana, one in a red for an instant. Play Chaotic Strike only during combat after blockers are declared. Uh, draw a card. Cool, cantrip. Choose target creature and flip a coin. If you win the flip, that creature gets plus one, plus one till end of turn. Ugh. Ugh. <laughs> well, I was probably going to play it after blockers were declared anyway, so... <laughs> You didn't really have to tell me to do that. Um, the best thing about this is that it cantrips. Everything else is terrible. Why can't it just get? Why can't I just get plus one plus one? Why do I have to flip a coin for just plus one plus one and nothing else? This card's bad, but it does kind of it cycles because it cantrips. So I'll give it a one point seven. A really bad card. Uh, mountain is up next. This is actually one of my favorite mountains <laughs> from Mirage. I like Mirage Land, but um. Yeah, if I was going to play a mountain from Mirage, it would be this one. Sucks it's not the one we got on Arena, but I still do like the one we got on Arena. The, like, all red one, like, the whole art is just red. 
<laughs> we'll move on to Vigor here. Vigor is a six mana, three and two, three green. Why can't I just like read? I'm like squinting at the card. Six mana, three and three green for a six, six elemental incarnation with trample. If damage will be dealt to another creature you control, prevent said damage. Put a plus one, plus one counter on that creature for each one damage prevented this way. When Vigor is put into a graveyard from anywhere, shuffle it into its owner's library. So this is um just absolutely stupid. <laughs> It really is. You run your dudes into combat, and even if they get blocked, it doesn't matter. They just get even larger, you know? And, like, this guy has trample. Um, and if any of your other dudes have trample, too, then, like, eventually, this just takes over the game. You know, they can block for maybe a turn or two, but after that, they, they just cannot block anymore. <laughs> they just won't be able to. This was originally printed in Lorwyn, by the way, which I don't think I really remembered. Um, to be honest, I really like Lorwyn, but for some reason I feel like this card is from longer ago than that even, but yeah, you see that this is, um, $10 or more, except for this one fallout version, a uh, fog crawler, which is a reskin of, of vigor. Uh, geez, dude, you just clawed my back entirely up. That's, it's going to look really terrible, dude. It's going to look bad. It is. I don't know why you felt the need to do that. We were having fun. You were just chilling on my shoulder. You were comfy. We we're having a good time. Yeah, don't give me that look. Don't give me, you know you did wrong. You know, you can't just scale down my back. You repelled down my back with your claws. That's not good. You shouldn't do that. Um, but yeah, this one you can get for six sixty five. dollars <laughs> This Fallout reskin. But um, most of these are like 13 14 bucks, and it's obvious to see why. This is a bit of a Timmy card, but it is also a card with just like the definition of inevitability <laughs> sort of written into it. So let's give this a 6.7. <laughs> like, I really I really think we're in that neighborhood, dude. Uh, 6.77, actually. I think this is a very good magic card. But we'll move on to Atara. Oh, boy. Atalara is still commanding like 1650 because it's a very good commander card. It's a very good modern card. It's a very good pioneer card. <laughs> it sees, it sees play everywhere. Um, yeah, this is a legendary land. Taps for blue. Comes to play untapped, by the way, and taps for blue. Channel. Three and a blue. Discard Atalara. Return target artifact, creature, enchantment, or planeswalker to its owner's hand. This ability costs one less to activate for each legendary creature that you control. Artifact, creature, enchantment, or planeswalker. I guess it doesn't hit battles. It just doesn't say non-land permanent. And, like, it might as well say non-land permanent. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, <clears throat> yeah. Just, what do you give a card like this? I think that these this legendary land cycle that was printed in the last, you know, Return to Kamigawa or whatever, uh, is among the best cycle of lands ever. I, I especially think that they are just maybe the best cycle of single color, like non-dual lands that's ever in the history of magic. Um, those are lofty words, and there are plenty that are good, right? Like the Alliance's cycle with Lake of the Dead and Keldor and Outpost, you know, Yavimaya, or Heart of Yavimaya. That was a good single color cycle. There are a few that are great, but my God. Um, <laughs> the original cycle from Kamigawa was good, right? But nowhere near as good as like Basaju, this, Takenuma, um, just a, just an all out completely baller collection of, of legendary lands. So there's almost no reason not to play this in commander. Um, and in just about any format where you're in blue and you have the ability to play it legally, there's just no reason not to play it. Um, and most of them are like that, <laughs> you know, that's honestly not something I love to see. Um, <clears throat> but you just can't deny the power level of a card like this. So Cool last card of the day. Um, really strong last card of the day. I'm going to give this... First of all, I'm going to ask the audience. So before I give you my score, I want you to go to the comment section and write your score. Because I want to know how everybody feels about these and this one specifically. Because they're all going to get different scores, I assume. Um, but yeah, I do think these are frightfully powerful. Uh, I'm going to give Otara uh, an 8.3. I think it's, I think it's deserved it. I think it does deserve it. Um, these are just crazy. I think I'll give Besaju a higher score when we get there, but Atara was probably the second best one. So 
Yeah, just in conjunction with like slow gurk and stuff. Well, with the standard, it was doing nasty things. But just outside of that, it's it's obviously an unbelievable, unbelievable magic card. Um, I'm glad that we get these cycles of legendary like single color lands sort of sparingly. But when we do get them, they're always going to be good. But that is all I've got for today. Let me know if you feel like that was way too high of a score. But it may have actually been slightly too low. <laughs> anyway, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye.